you know, there was word on the street that this big swell was coming. I was just praying they were all wrong, you know. I didn't want to go out in big swell because I'd already come off on it surfing and got held down and it scared the life out of me just because those waves are so powerful, you know. Like, it just can't prepare you for when you're down there and how violent it is. So I was praying that it wasn't going to come. Literally, I was praying it wasn't going to come. He is really adamant about getting that bike in a big wave. And uh, I'm here to help him. I just don't want to hurt him. Don't want him to get hurt. The night before, we're laying in bed, and you could hear the waves start crashing on the reef. You could hear it out a mile away. Go, bang. So you knew they were getting big. The morning of when I woke up, literally, I must have been looking at the ocean when there was a lull in the swell, because I was looking and it wasn't, wasn't too big, and I was like, yes, <laughs> it's not too big. It's, it's gonna be a good day. And then uh, I called Nate, Nate Holly was down at um, Ray Marner's house, and they're like, dude, it's on, it's pumping. I'm like, no, are you sure? And he's like, yeah, yeah, it's like 15, easy 15 feet down here. And I'm like, oh, God. I've never seen him like that. Never, see, never seen him like that. The whole entire project, he was so just focused and driven. And for the first time, uh, I could see he was genuinely nervous. And I think it's because this is the, this is the culmination of all of this lead up for years, all of the training, everything led up to this moment. Devin pulled me aside and just kind of had a chat to me and said, you know go and talk to Robbie and if he's not, you know, if he's not feeling like doing it, to tell him, you know, we don't have to do it. We've got enough footage where we could probably, you know, not have to do this big wave. You know, if there's anything that I've learned about Robbie Madison is if you give him an out, he's gonna go full throttle in the opposite direction. I came there to do a job and I wasn't gonna let fear stand in the way, you know. I knew I'd learn enough along the progression of this where I need to be and I knew that if I got out there and I just took the time, to give it the respect it needs and really thought it through clearly and looked at exactly what I need to do, I knew I could pull it off. I, I mean, I don't want to make the calls, you know. My Ramana's the expert surfer. If he thinks we shouldn't go out there, then let's not go out there. Yeah. But I'm, I'm happy to, to do it. You're happy to go out now? Yeah. When that storm came in and the, and the sky went dark, the, it seemed like the swell just gained another five or six feet. It was, it was insane. And, then Romana got this huge wave um, and I could just feel the power of it. I was on the jet ski riding along beside him and he's just barreled in this easy 20 foot wave. And I was just like, oh man, I could feel the energy that was there. And I was just like, dude, I do not want to come off Why that's going down. I think at the end of the day, I wanted it so bad that I realize I'm giving it my all, no matter what cost, I'm gonna see this through. We know that he could ride waves on a dirt bike. We know he can ride giant waves on a surfboard. And now he's gonna put these things together in truly a life or death situation. And it seemed like a lot of things were going against us. You know, changing tides, there's issues that the bike not working right, spark plugs failing, not having the parts, hitting massive dead-end roads that fundamentally should stop you. The ocean was so rough, we couldn't even have the catch a barge out there. I swear it was scary for us, for the crew, just to even get out to where he was gonna ride. Not really. Papara is not a friendly place for filmers. I saw, I, I looked over at one point, I saw the other crew's boat just going straight up and just slam down. It was an overcast day and it was rough. I was just like, well, I was that nervous. It's such an intense moment. I mean, literally what flashed through my head was just fear. And all of a sudden, it just seems like a bad idea. This huge ominous cloud came over us, and it just felt like, like that was the sign of the time, like, you're not supposed to be here. 
It kind of seemed like the ocean was saying, look how big I am, turn away, don't come near me, you know? It just started raining on us all of a sudden last minute. Robbie's sitting at the top of that, that ramp, ready to go, and it just starts pouring rain. The feeling that went through me was like, I should have paid more attention to the signs I've been given. Like, a lot of things told me to kind of not get myself into this situation. So like, this is the last possible time to do anything. Like, we're seriously getting on a plane in 10 hours, and we're out in the middle of the ocean trying to get this dude on a wave. So when I was out there, I mean, I'm sitting on the boat, and I think because the swell was so out of control, Ray Mano decided to be on the ski. I think that's why he was on the ski, but I really wanted him on the boat. And right before I went, I was like, whoa, why isn't Ray Mano here helping me pick a wave? So I was like, you know what, it is what it is. I'm gonna just pick the wave that I feel and if it, if it takes me down, that's just the way it's meant to go, you know? So part of me thought that maybe Ray Mano's on the jet ski just so he can help in the right space to save me if, if something goes wrong. So that was a big emotion for me because I just, I just really felt lonely out there. All I could do at that point was look for the biggest wave, you know, that's all I was looking for. And, um, and sure enough, I saw a big wave coming and I didn't know at that point, but it was like the wrong wave. I knew right away I picked the wrong wave and this sickening feeling went through my stomach, like just knowing that you're in the wrong place at the wrong time. So I'm tucked in, just pinning it on this thing and as it's growing, I'm seeing it's knifing up. And then right as it kind of like kicked over and was at the point where I couldn't know no return, I realized this thing's too big, totally screwed right now. And so I really put the whole fear of grass through me. At that point, my life flashed before my eyes. <laughs> Instantaneously, as soon as I hit, the bike just slammed me in the back. Once I got thrown down, the ride was so violent it seemed like I was never gonna make it out of there. It was very scary. I literally thought this is the end. The doctor goes to me, he's gone. And I'm like, what do you mean he's gone? Like, he says it again, he's gone. He goes, they can't find him, he's gone, he's not there. So I'm on, I'm at their house, I'm like in tears, just freaking out. It was the first moment in the entire trip that I felt that I didn't, didn't wanna be there and what the hell am I, what are we doing here? We could have just watched a, a good friend of ours and hero of ours die. The time when I was like, oh, that wasn't meant to happen. You know, like, cause it took the breath out of me and now I'm just getting in the most violent ride I can never explain. And with this fear of this motorcycle hitting you. To this, to this day, I, I'll never forget that. And it was one of the heaviest moments of my entire career. I watched the helicopters, they're like circling over. And what seemed like for two, three, four, five minutes, it just kept going and going and going. Nothing. And then I pop up and surface to take a deep breath and to hope, hoping that the jet skis are there and I can see them in the distance and see another wave coming and know that I'm about to, it's all about to happen again. It was a set of five and just these massive waves just kept coming. And I literally got the chance to take a deep breath like, <gasps> And I'm like, kept asking them, have they found him? Have they found him? And then the next one just smashed me in the face and then I was back into this insane turmoil ride, just getting ripped in every different direction. When I keep asking the doctor, can they find him? Can they find him? And he's, he's like just saying nothing to me at this point. There was a couple times where I saw him. I was like, yes, 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 he's, he's okay, he's okay. And um, then another set would just boom, just crush him. By that time, my boots are full of water and I can feel my legs pulling me down. And I don't know which way is up or down or where, it's just a total white out. I thought he was dead. I thought they couldn't find him. And my biggest nightmare is that he was gonna drown on this trip. And then I surfaced again and 
the next time I came up, I see the helicopter just circling above me and it seems like a full, I mean, it was, it was an emergency situation, you know, like you had two guys in the water, myself and Chris Bryan. And then the wave hit me and I kept rolling. So I didn't even get to dive down, no safety vest or anything. And I just remember getting blown up, just doing backflips and um, getting pushed down really deep. And um, in my mind, I just kept thinking, the housing floats, so whatever you do, don't let go of the housing, that'll pull you to the surface. And um, the wave behind was even bigger. And this wave just come through and we, they can't even find us. It was one of the heaviest situations I've been in, just because it was out of my control where I was dropped from the jet ski and there was nowhere I could go. Finally, he goes, I think I see a helmet on the back of a jet ski. And I'm like, oh, relief. And then probably 30 seconds goes past and I'm like, what do you mean you think you saw a helmet on the back of the jet ski? For the last 30 seconds, I've been relieved that they've found Robbie, but they haven't. In those situations, times of crisis, the best thing you can do is be calm. And so I literally had to bring that calmness over myself because I was freaking out. So they try and call, you know, a bunch of people on different boats. No one's picking up their phones at this point. Man, I was, um, I was fighting for my life at that point. It was, it was, I didn't think it would get that scary. I remember just immediately thinking, you know, back to his family and what they must be thinking and what they must be feeling. It's like the realization of, I've got two kids, they need a dad, is just all come to me. And I'm just like, eyes are just watering. All the guys in the boats couldn't see him and we were trying to circle around Robbie and like point down because we could actually see him from the air. I mean, it was, it was really scary for a while. And I was like, he's got to make it out. He's got to make it out. You see dudes on the skis and like they're coming back and you're like, oh, sick, they got him. They came back just to drop off another filmer and they were still looking for him. Nerves were high, man. <laughs> Before I knew it, I popped out and everything was just super bright and uh, I could just see the next wave coming for me. I actually said like a, a, just a, a, a little prayer and was like, man, you've got you've to save <laughs> Robbie Madison. Man, it was so good to just feel the grip of someone else's hand to pull me out of the water. Like that. Robbie appeared. We heard we got radio signal that he was okay. <laughs> Robbie and Chris are safe. Oh, Let's go over there. Let's go over there. It's, it's insane how strong you become in a time of crisis because when I grabbed the guy who saved me, when we, our grip slid down and we actually slid and my glove pulled and my jersey pulled and so it wasn't like that skin on skin, wet skin on skin bond you get when you pull out. So we kind of slid and at the end it was my finger and he held on by one finger and we were one finger locked and he yanked me out of the water like that. So, I mean, I, I guarantee you fully geared up, wet, I could never do that again. And I grabbed that, the sled and managed to get myself on and just yelled out, go, 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 and we got out of there. There's a, a few moments like that in your life where it's like, this is what's important, he's okay. It was literally the best, best feeling I've ever felt in my life. I just went from the lowest of the lows to the highest of the highs of, oh my God, he's okay. This project's gonna be a success. Here we are, like everything's good again. And that roller coaster was, was pretty intense. I mean, it just feels like a near death experience. And then finally, we get a phone call from Devin and it's Rob. He's like, I'm okay. The fact that he got out of there safe is the greatest thing for us. This guy taught a very valuable lesson. It just shows you, you can't control mother nature. And it was just like a weird feeling. It was kind of like I had deja vu of like a nightmare. I honestly thought it was the end of my life. Chris okay as well? Yeah, he's all right. This is the most that I ever wanted to quit on something. And to just stick with it through so much emotional pain and torment and, and finally our success is just a, it's a very uh, great feeling and something that will probably stay with me for the rest of my life to teach me to just never give in in something you truly believe in. What he's achieved is so amazing and so out of left field. Hats off to him for achieving these goals. 
It's tough when you're doing these benchmarks and stepping the sports forwards and being the first to do certain things because nothing actually changes. It's just this like egoic thing and this recognition thing that it's not really, uh, doesn't quench you in any way. It's just something to be proud of. It's not what the real fruits of life are about. I'm just trying to follow the path that's true to me, to who I am, and this is what my heart's telling me to do, is to follow this, this road of adventure and expedition, doing stuff that hasn't been done yet. That's what life's about, you know, you just gotta make it happen. No matter how you make it happen, you just gotta make it happen, and we did that. You can surf a motorcycle. I had some pretty big crashes on this thing. I've broken my ankle, I've dislocated my shoulder, I've had a concussion, um, some that we've missed on footage, unfortunately. Fortunately enough, on this project, the funniest thing is, is everyone saw the doctor other than me. Dude, staff is an Arlie. Threw up on three different boats. It's like a stomach infection the last four days of the trip. Asthma. Spraining my ankle. Ear infection, staph infection. In the urgent care, I just saw him pick out little pieces of coral. He's like, dude, this was growing in you. Out of all the diseases that everybody had gotten from being in Tahiti, uh, I think mine was the most mellow. I got a ringworm. A beetle bit my tongue. Hemorrhoids. Everyone kept warning us, don't, don't step on sea urchins, don't step on sea urchins. So of course, I stepped on a sea urchin. Ramana comes out of nowhere, flying over. Let me pee on it, let me pee on it. <laughs> So they just strapped me to the top of a Kia with a handheld stabilizer and just went like 45 down the side of this road. <laughs> uh, Mikey likes to surf, he likes to be involved in lots of stuff, he's, he's a great guy to be around and so he was just badgering and badgering the entire crew wanting to figure out what was going on in Tahiti. Basically no one would tell me, not even Jeff. Obviously we were trying to keep it as quiet as possible, so much so that even Mikey who is in our inner circle of, of the brand team, uh, we weren't even telling him. I don't even know if Martin does this or not, but I went skating with Martin one day and I was like, dude, crazy, like, can you believe everything's going on in Tahiti? And he's like, dude, I know, it's so crazy. He's like, you know, right? I'm like, yeah, I know. So then he started saying, like, dude, I can't believe it happens. Like, dude, they ride a motorcycle on, and I'm like, yeah, crazy. It's hot in Tahiti here.